my Dr. Harrison Vaughn here, instructor for cervicogenic dizziness for integrative clinical concepts. I get a question a lot of times of how common or what's the prevalence rate of a cervical component issue in post-concussion symptoms. And the thing is, we have to think about when we're looking at this is really someone has had a mild traumatic brain injury and we gotta think about what do you see normally when you have someone who's had a whiplash injury? Because nowadays we're really thinking about uh, these individuals have the same kind of diagnosis coming in together. But in reality, we've got to go into some of the research to look at this and the statistics that come around from it. And the crazy thing is, even though there's a lot of hype about concussion recently, we can even go back to 1956, the Seletz's work, and it talks about some of the uh, cranial cervical kind of dysfunction that comes together. And even most recently, I recommend reading Mark Lundwad's work in 2017. And so really, they really talk about how do you address some of these individuals, potentially up to 20% of people who might have post-concussion symptoms who don't really respond within that first seven or 10 days. And really the research is even saying that anywhere between say 32% or 83% of individuals had some sort of post-concussion symptoms have a cervical component. Now how many of those people have dizziness is a different question and we can actually go into two studies here recently. Jennifer Renneker's work in 2015 found about 25% or one quarter of the patients actually had dizziness who were part of a cervical dysfunction. And actually if you go back a year to the classic study by Schneider in 2014, they found that even 86% of the patients had dizziness with a cervical component. So the numbers kind of vary a little bit. I wanna know what you see in clinical practice, but I think this really just shows you, and you can read it more in our blog, that you can't miss looking at the cervical spine when somebody who's had a concussion or coming to your office, and I would even recommend looking at it before you even do some of the vestibular rehab therapy or even we kind of teach it in our physio blend before you get into some of your sensor motor training and even strengthening. And that goes back to some Mark on Blood's uh, theoretical conceptual model as well. So read the blog and learn more and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.